this was my friend. I I knew him for uh, let me see about sixty one years or something, sixty two years. He no, we didn't see each other that often, but he. You know, our families would get together once in a while and stuff like that. Of course, the last 10, 15 years, most of the get-togethers, sadly, were, you know, <laughs> people dying and such. Uh, but anyway, he, he was a wonderful person. He, uh, uh, as I said, well-known in the community, always had a smile, always had a joke, would always try and help you. Uh, just, just a great guy. You know, just a great guy. So anyway, on to the next thing I was going to talk about. Uh, funerals. Anyway. He was Catholic. Now, if I remember correctly, and I think I'm right on this, he married this lady who was Catholic and he converted or whatever it is you do. And uh, he and I never actually sat down and said, hey, do you believe all that crap? So I have no idea what he believed. I mean, frankly, I don't. So as I said, he was well known in the community, and uh, the funeral uh, the services, or whatever you call them, was in a huge church, and it was jammed full of people. And just after getting there, I was I was starting to feel well, I'm not sure what, but I was just I was just pissed off. Um, and then I, I would say the show started. Uh, there were three priests, or uh, I guess they were all priests, and they had their chairs, and they came out in these tacky costumes. Then there was all these other people involved, I don't know, you know, like altar boys or what have you. And these guys would pop up, go read some Bible stuff, some Lord stuff, praise the Lord, and all this kind of stuff. And they would sit down, and another one would pop up, and you know, and all of that. And it just kept going on and on. And then people would come in, uh, of course, prior to the service, the people were coming in the church or dipping their hands in water. They'd get down and get on their knees and do all this kind of business. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just ticked off, you know, just ticked off. So here's, here's this friend of mine who, you know, I'll never see again, and uh, who was a really nice person and just a great guy and uh, all of a sudden I realized the show they're putting on isn't as far as I'm concerned it wasn't for my friend it was for God you know and I'm thinking you know I, 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 I'm sure I had enough <laughs> control <laughs> that I wasn't going to do this but I had this urge uh, to just jump up and start yelling and screaming you know just yelling and screaming. Uh, you know, I don't know what that yell and scream but It's likely you guys are all full of shit, you know, or something like that. And uh, <laughs> I've most likely been shot like a dog, a rabid dog, you know. Uh, but I was just, I was just pissed off. And I was sitting pretty far back in the church. I had this urge to leave. And I said, would it be disrespectful? How could it be disrespectful? My friend said, he surely can't see what I'm doing. And I'm far enough back that no one will see me leave. And the church was big enough and there were enough people in there that people were, I'm sure they weren't leaving, they were like going to the bathroom or, you know, doing something. So I'm sure that it wouldn't be like, oh gosh, look, he, he fled the church. <laughs> you know? Send the guards out and get him, bring him back. Uh, so I sat there for a while and, and, and thought about it. And, um, you know, his, his family couldn't see me leave. Uh, and even if someone saw me get up and go, they would think maybe I'm going to the bathroom or whatever you do in church, you know, go back and pray somewhere or something. And uh, so I left. And... I may go to, uh, what I normally do is go to the church, and possibly the cemetery, and never go to the funeral home. Uh, 
I think what I'm going to do from now on is just send a card and go to the funeral home and let it go at that. The uh, now I um, uh, I'm just not going to I guess for lack of a better term subject myself to this church crap anymore. I'm just not going to do it. it has nothing to do with being disrespectful of the person who's dead. The person doesn't know what I'm doing. The person's dead. The person's not looking down on me. Come on, fellas. Anyway, so I guess that's it. And, and I've had this cup a long time. And of course, I always think about my friend. Uh, not every time I pick it up, but almost every time. You know, think about the day he and his wife brought it over here and gave it to me. Anyway, I guess that's about it, folks. That's, uh, what can I say? Uh, if you have friends out there who you haven't seen in a while, give them a call. Go visit with them. Uh, you know, you never can tell. You don't know when they aren't going to be here. And um, a few weeks ago, <laughs> uh, I was thinking about things, whatever that means. And all of a sudden it dawned on me what would be really good is if for the rest of my life, however many minutes, seconds, months, weeks, or whatever that is, what would be a good thing? A good thing would be if I have no new regrets. I have so many regrets, it's unbelievable. In fact, if you lined up the things that I sort of like that I've done, and you lined up the things that I look back and say, oh gosh, why did I do that? You know, the regrets. Man, oh man. The, reg <laughs> the regrets would win. <laughs> Hands down, as they say. So, I decided that if I could consciously do this, in other words, keep this in mind, and, I, and I'm not able to because I haven't since I thought about it, a good way to live your life would be to have no new regrets. You know? And, and before you uh, do something, you know, think about it and say, is this going to cause a new regret? And if it's going to, you might want to not do it. Anyway, that was kind of preachy, no pun intended. Uh, what can I say? As Pat Condell would say, peace.